Hey, you made it to the second video in this playlist. If you missed the first one, it's all about how to get the pixel on your Shopify site. This video is one of my favorites. This is one a lot of people skip over and then they're like, ah, Facebook ads didn't work for me. If that's happening to you, this video is gonna be a game changer because we're talking about all about market research, how to actually figure out who's going to wanna buy your products before you even spend a dollar on ads. And real quick before we get into the video, I just wanna thank you for being here. My name's Steven, this is the Rainmaker Family channel. And on this channel, we're all about residual income, creating income for your family online. And so this is just part of the puzzle. Uh, we saw Camden, she was in a program, she launched a Shopify site, and I was like, let's help you take this to the next level because I see a ton of potential in it. So you're gonna watch a Zoom call that we're gonna go on with Camden. I walk her through click by click of how to do this thing. And this whole playlist is gonna document Camden's whole journey with taking her Shopify site and then running Facebook ads and growing her brand through marketing. So with that, let's uh, let's hop into the Zoom call. We'll see you over there. Hello, we are back with Camden. Uh, in the last video, we talked about setting up your Facebook pixel on Shopify. Um, now you have this set up, the pixel's on there, it's getting seasoned. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is figure out who are we gonna market to with this product? Now, if you have a one product shop, you probably already know who this product is for but Camden has a lot of products on her shop. So we wanna dig through that and figure out what's gonna be the quickest win for her. The thing with Facebook ads is it definitely is like testing and trying. So we may have to try a couple of different products, but we really wanna stack the deck in her favor and not just like, like we could take all her products and market it to people who just love art. And that could work. And over time, Facebook could learn, oh wow, these people really like this product and it would definitely start working. But we don't wanna to burn too much money in the beginning. So what I'm thinking is to get her a quick win, we're gonna find a single product in her shop that we think will resonate with a single audience. And we're gonna design everything for that one person in an advertisement. I think the best ads are ones that really stop the scroll. Uh, when people are scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, and they see something that's like, this is just for me, like, wow, I need to click on this. That's the feeling we wanna give uh, these customers who are gonna see her website. And hopefully this product is like a gateway into Camden's world and uh, it'll introduce them to her world and they'll buy more than just one product on her site. And what I'm thinking is if we can do this with one product, we can replicate it and do it with other products. But this video is really all about how do we figure out what type of data Facebook knows about people and how your products potentially align with that data and how we can pair the two together. So this is all about market research, audience research. And so Camden's gonna share her screen again and we're gonna dive a little bit into this audience research topic. We're gonna be using two different tools in um, this video. The, um, the first one is the audience insights tool on Facebook, uh, which you can see we have open right in this tab here. And so to get to the audience insights tool, you can see the domain is business.facebook.com slash ad slash audience insights. You can stop right there. Um, you can also get to it by clicking in like the menu where you find all the stuff when it comes to advertising, going down to the analytics section and finding audience insights. Um, this tool is great, but um, not all these interests are targetable, which means like, yeah, we can target people that, um, we can send the ad to people who are in a certain age range and a certain gender and have a certain interest, but not every interest that you put in here is actually one that Facebook will allow you to send, to put in your advertising settings. So I love this tool right here called Interest Explorer. Interestexplorer.io, it's a one-time pay um, tool. You pay $97 and you get this tool for life. There's no recurring subscription or anything like that, but it's a super simple tool. Um, I was helping someone the other day who was marketing a hockey product. And look at this, you can put in hockey into, um, into the section right here, type it in, hit explore. And it, what it does, it finds all these potential interests that you can target on Facebook. And the power behind this is because Facebook is like most advertising systems, a bidding system. So if I just put in hockey, which is probably way at the bottom down here, like with, you know, hundreds of thousands of interests, right? So let's go to hockey, 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 hockey. Okay, let's go to ice hockey. 186 million people interested in ice hockey. But you gotta like, to understand why this tool is so powerful, you have to understand kind of Facebook. Now, when someone says they're interested in ice hockey, this isn't actually hockey players, okay? This might be someone who like was shopping for a hockey stick for their kid. This could have been someone who was like clicked on a random article about hockey player that was in the news, right? This isn't just people who are hockey players, right? So 
where you really get the bang for your buck is not by bidding against other people who just put in hockey because that's beginner stuff with Facebook. Okay, If you just put in ice hockey, you're bidding against probably hundreds of thousands of other companies targeting ice hockey. What you want to do is niche down and find the stuff that only hockey players know about, right? So only hockey players. Now, I'm not a hockey player. I don't know. Kander, are you a hockey player? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not a hockey player, but let's go down to the niche one. See this million person audience? I'm going down, way down, way down here. Hockey night in Canada. Okay. Hockey night in Canada. That feels more like a, like a hockey specific interest. Now you could probably go even further down here and I don't know who this is, but I'm going to guess he's a hockey player. I would probably Google this if I was marketing to hockey players and I needed to learn more about this, but this could be like actually a hockey player. And if I target that, then it's like, you're actually going to hockey fans or people who are more into this thing than just like the broad interest. So that's the power of this tool. And so we're going to use this tool to dig into some of uh, Camden's art prints and figure out if we can find niches within her existing product suite that we can target. And the cool thing is you can stack these interests together. So we could go and click on a bunch of these here like this. And uh, what it does, it puts them in this little selection up here. You can copy this and paste it over to Facebook and send ads to these people who like these things specifically right here. And when you go for these lower audience sizes, when you stack those together, your advertising cost is way lower um, than people who are just going for the big hockey ones. Okay, so that's why this tool is super powerful and it'll pay you back if you buy it for $97 uh, many, many times over. We found some of our most powerful audiences for our own business through this tool. All right, so let's hop over to the Audience Insights tool. I'll share with you guys how this one works really quick and then we're gonna dive into Camden's products, ask her a couple questions and figure out where we should start. So the Audience Insights tool, very similar to the Interest Explorer tool, um, but you just put the interest in here. So let's do hockey here. Um, let's put in that hockey and let's see what comes up. Okay. So this is nice for demographics. You can see, um, wow, a lot of hockey players are married. A lot of hockey players have been to college. Um, 60% uh, men, 40% female. Um, that's awesome. Um, you can also see, uh, their job titles potentially, um, like percentage of like how many hockey players are, um, did I say veterans, veterans. Uh, I thought it said veterinarians. <laughs> Uh, how many hockey players are in cleaning and maintenance? It's pretty interesting. Um, now these again, they're not just hockey players. I'm just putting an interest here. That's a pretty broad interest. One other helpful thing though that might help you out is looking at page likes. So um, we can see like what type of pages they're liking on Facebook. So um, news and media website, hockey feed. I've never heard of that, but if I was a hockey player or had a hockey product, I might look at advertising on that website. TV channel, NHL, and NBC Sports. Makes sense. Um, but there's also some random stuff in here, right? Like movie, Boondock Saints. Like that's kind of random, but like um, I could see how these two might be related. Like if I want to make a funny hockey advertisement, I might make like a Boondock Saints like spoof. And I'd be like all about hockey, but like in Boondock Saints style. I think that would do really well with this audience based on this data we're getting here. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just giving this hockey example. We're gonna do the same thing for Camden with her products and figure out, okay, how can we reach this potential customer on Facebook and have them really love this brand that they're about to discover. So I was just quizzing Camden. I was saying, hey, what, what's what's some of your top sellers on this site so far? What has kind of had some, some favor in the past, let's call it. And she was saying this print right here specifically, um, you said it was featured on HDTV, is that right? Yeah, I painted it for HGTV. Painted it for HGTV. So that's really cool. We kind of have some social proof. We can kind of attach to that. Hey, have this print in your house that was featured on this show or something, right? That's really cool. Uh, this is a cow. I also had to ask about that. Is this a cow? Like Highland cow is a special kind of cow. that has long hair. It's really cool looking. And so <laughs> we're going to dig into this one a little bit and see if we could find an audience who's going to love this product. I don't know. If there's people, and I know there are people who love cows. I know because the people buy these cow things all the time, but I don't know if Facebook has that data. So we want to kind of see and dig into that a little bit. So um, let's go to the interest explorer tool and let's let's clear out this hockey thing here. And um, let's put in, I'm just going to put in cow and see what comes up. Cow. Okay. So what we want to do again, same thing. We don't want to just, we don't want to just target cows right? Uh, because that's a very broad interest. 
But what we want to look for is those more niche specific things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this and we're going to start, I'm going to have to Google some of these things because I just, I don't know what a Hungarian gray cattle is, but it does sound pretty niche specific, right? Oh. Oh, it's a it's a specific style of cow. Interesting. Okay, cool. So we're gonna just note that down. If people like that, maybe they're gonna like this cow too. Um, Maine Anjou cattle. Wow, there's all these different. This must be different kind of breeds of cattle. Okay, very cool. But I would say like the average Joe probably doesn't know what a Hungarian gray cattle is or a Maine Anjou cattle unless they're like into cows, right? <laughs> I don't know, like, like, I, I, I know my cows pretty well, and I didn't know those. So yeah, yeah, um, I think that's cool. Now, Texas cattle dog rescue, I think that's probably a, a specific style of, um, yeah, it's a specific style of dog. Okay, so we're not gonna do that one, um, but let's select those two. Um, do you know what this is? I'm a little afraid to click on this one. Cow calf. Ooh, that sounds no. Yeah, that's... let's not click that. <laughs> sounds like them having babies okay skinny cow is like a food thing right it's like a diet product yeah and then creative cow is like a it's like a forum for like um photoshop and stuff yeah so these this is why it's helpful to like google these things right because if you didn't know you would have to figure out what these are okay Ooh, this looks really good texas and southwestern cattle raisers association wow hey. okay so those people are they are your people yes they are <laughs> They are paying probably to be a part of this association. Like they're legit. They love yeah. cows. Okay, so we're gonna click that one. <laughs> okay, I don't know what this one is. Let's click on Google. Let's figure out what that is. Okay. A breed of dairy cattle. Wow, this is awesome. Okay, I, I have a good feeling about this. Let's do all these different breeds. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna pause this video and we'll keep going down in the same fashion and we'll report back to you guys in just a second. Okay, we've been going through the breeds of cattle and I just saw something magical. Look. Highland cattle, <laughs> 705,000 people that are interested in Highland cattle. So we don't know what that means, but I feel like we should just go all in on that one. <laughs> I agree. Because at first I was like, let's just do all the breeds, but like, why don't we just try that one first? Yeah. Um, the thing with Facebook, like, yeah, we could throw all these into Facebook and we definitely should try that. But we, if if this ad starts to really work, we won't know. Was it the gun? Gensi cattle people? Was it the was it the association? Was it the Menajou? You know. Um. So if you guys can narrow it down to one that you're like, wow, if I could do one, it'd be that one. That would be the one. And so I think that's awesome that that is an interest on Facebook. I had no idea, but you wouldn't know until you, yeah. you put it in here, you know, in this tool, or you put it in Facebook and, and try it out. So let's definitely do that one. Um. Now let's see if there's any other um, Highland cow specific ones. If we're gonna go really niche on that one. Um, I think some of these other ones could be big audiences for you too. Tractor Supply Company, the association, you know, those things could do really well for you at some point. But um, I think we should definitely um, focus on that Highland cow. I mean, 700,000 people, um, just so you know, like I go for audiences, my favorite size audience is between 50,000 and a million. That feels pretty niche specific where it's not like you're competing with millions and millions and millions of people. Um, so I like that 50,000 to a million and you're right in that range with that one. So I feel good. I do too. The other thing we can do here, okay, we found one interest and yes, we could send out Camden's ad to the Highland cow interest and it might just kill it. And I think we should try that. We should try, just send it out to that broad interest. I mean, it's pretty niche specific, but it's just one interest. But where Facebook really shines is interest stacking, okay? So you say, they don't just like Highland cows, they also love art or something like that, right? That was just an example. But when you stack two things together, you can speak to that person on a whole nother level, right? So like, for example, let me just give a random example. Well, this probably isn't what we're gonna do. But like, if we said they love Highland cow and they love, you know, the Bible, right? And then in the ad, you know, Camden is wearing a cross necklace and holding her thing. Now that's a little sneaky, but we know that that person is going to not only see the cow that they love, but they're probably gonna trust Camden because they also, you know, love the Bible, right? So that is just an example of how you can stack like interests together and then speak the, the language of your audience on a whole nother level. Now that was just a visual thing. Um, you could also go, okay, they love Highland cow 
and they love um, wine, okay? And then the, the ad, maybe it's Camden, and she's painting this cow, and she has her wine, and she's like, you know, a good art print is like a good glass of wine, right? So she can say that <laughs> in the ad, and we know it's gonna catch that person's attention, because not only do they love the cows, they love the wine. Um, so think through your own business as you're watching this video. How can you stack interests together and really speak to a very specific person based on those things? I think the most logical thing for Camden is going cow and then finding an art type interest that shows not just that they love art, but that they're willing to invest in art. So let's use this. And uh, Camden, do you know of any like um, other kind of like art websites where people would buy art like this, like a digital download of some sort? Yes, there's one called Juniper. J Juniper. Yeah, Juniper Print Shop. Okay, so Juniper, J-U-N-I-P-E-R? Uh-huh. All right, so not every interest is on Facebook. And I know, I think we talked about this person before, they do actually have like a pretty big following online, but they might not be in Facebook system yet. It's really, it's really weird how some things are in Facebook, some things are not. I think Juniper Networks is showing up, but that's not them, is it? No. That's cybersecurity. So um, let's keep going down. Just make sure it's not in here, but I don't think it is. So are there any other, like, um, uh, maybe more well-known, maybe they're not as, not as, you know, cool as your website or maybe Juniper's, but is it like, you know, like art.com or something more broad where it's just like, it shows that someone oh. maybe has invested in art online? Hmm. These are all good questions. See, I have my standard ones. I'm uh, gonna do this one. That's the one that's coming to my mind because I think that is a thing, right? Hold I on. So. Or what is it called? Art.com? There's definitely one that is, uh, is it this one? Yeah, okay. So I just searched it, nothing yeah. came out. Okay, let me just put art. Let's put art and then tell all me right. if you recognize any of these because you're in the space so you know more things in the art space than I would know. Like, you know, it's like the cow thing. We both didn't know about the cows as much. But in the art space, you might recognize some of these and go, oh yeah, that one, you know? So yeah. um, let's go down actually to the bottom first, because uh, that's gonna be the most popular ones. And we'll kind of go up from here. And we probably, like if we had to, we could just do arch music, but that's like not very specific again. So let's see if we can find some that are like about, I want to see stuff that shows that they, not just that they like art, but they invest in art. So work of our art museum potentially okay i bet if we could find some specific art museums that would be cool because this is kind of broad but if we could see like that they're going to you know different art museums um that'd be really sweet let me see if we see any others and just jump in if you see any here i know um, ryan these are still actually pretty big audiences so let's keep going down art deco there's a museum right there metro metropolitan um so we can remember that one let's come back to that now, what we could do, because because that top interest we're going to put in there is 750,000 people who like the Highland cows, as soon as we stack on one of these and we say they got to like Highland cows and they have to like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, that's going to take that audience size down from like 750,000 to like 20,000 people. So what we actually might do strategically, and we'll figure this out in the next video, is we might put Highland cow as like the qualifier and then like put a ton of art interest in the bottom one. So it's like, Okay. Highland Cow or Metropolitan, or sorry, Highland Cow and Metropolitan or Highland Cow and Art Jewelry and Highland Cow and Art Exhibition. And just like, it could be anything in the bottom box. Well, like okay. that could be a strategy we try as well. Um, so let me just see though, if there's anything else here that shows um, kind of like art.com or some sort of e-commerce art. Not so this does show.com. I mean, does, oh, never mind. That was a silly question. It would. Yeah, no, sometimes like the interest is in there as a dot com. Like it'll be okay. like moo.com, you know, or something yeah. like that. Um, not seeing any sword art. What is it? Sword art online. <laughs> is that just. Oh. Uh, uh, okay. That's like a. Okay. I thought like, it was like a store of sword art. I know. I'm like, what is that? Michael's might Michaels? be. Michael's? That could be. Hey. Yeah. They. That's kind of a DIY, and since it's digital downloads, you would That's have- That's a to really good point, yeah. That's a really good point you made there, Camden, because um, this isn't like, they can buy an actual physical print of this thing, yeah. but the low hanging fruit is the digital download. And you made a good point. These are the DIYers, the people who are gonna actually do a digital download, have it printed and frame themselves. 
like that's Michael's. Like that's a really good point. Um, that's Michael's is a kind of a crafting store, right? So yeah, I like that. So let's let's just mark that one, and mm-hmm. I bet there's going to be other ones like that. And so this is where testing comes into play. What we're going to do probably on Facebook is uh, after this video, I'll give you some homework to like go create some creative around this piece, which you probably already have some photos already around this piece, but maybe a video or something will be really cool. And then what we'll do is we're going to test it. We'll do, we'll test one audience that's just Highland Cow interest. We'll test one that's like Highland Cow plus like DIY art interest, like Michael's and you know, all the other art store type places. And then we'll do maybe like one that's Highland Cow and like some just broad art interest um, or something like that. Or maybe even HGTV because you have that HGTV social proof. Yeah. What was the show that was, it was on? Yeah, it's a very small one. There is okay. a show. It's called Mom and Me. Mom um, and me. Okay, we'll try that because if me. that's an interest and someone's really into that show and then this pops up, like that would be really cool. Oh, so yeah. awesome. And okay. should we search digital downloads, art digital downloads? Let's try that. Yeah, um, let's try that. Let me pause this video. We'll write down a couple of these for our future uh, okay. targeting. And then we'll try digital downloads next to see if like that's a target. Cause basically actually Facebook has a thing called interests. Mm-hmm. They also have a thing called um, purchase behavior. They have a thing called behaviors. Mm-hmm. So they have things like um, frequent credit card users and like um, frequent travelers and right. things that are like people actually do and they, they, they know about them. So if they, if there is a behavior for digital download or something like that, that would be awesome. I don't know if there is, but if there is, we, will, we should definitely find that. So yeah. we'll be right back in the video. We'll, we'll, to, we'll give you an update at the end what we find. So this feels pretty good. We went from like, how are we going to market these products to really finding a specific audience to market a specific product to. Now, if you just have a one product shop, do this same process. Like who is this product exactly for? And you maybe have different audiences because again, like it's all about testing. So what we came up with is three different audiences that we're going to test on Facebook. We're going to test just the straight Highland cow interest. Just anyone who likes Highland cows, that specific cow that's in this beautiful art print, we're going to target them. Uh, Then we're going to niche that down. We're going to say not just they like Highland cow, but they also are into the DIY stuff. They're into Joanne's Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, Michael's stores. Um, This is definitely this audience who is going to be more leaning towards uh, the DIY. Just print it yourself, frame it yourself, and hang it. And then lastly, we have uh, just to leverage the social proof that we already have with this product that it's been featured on HGTV, um, we're going to hit the Highland Cow plus the HGTV interest. And these were just similar shows, similar kind of audience. We kind of thought through all their shows and saw the ones on the tool and figured out the ones that are likely to have similar watchers to maybe the show that this was featured on. Because anyway, we can stack the deck in Camden's favor. Again, like Facebook ads can, you put a thousand dollars on Facebook ads, it'll just burn your money. It's like burning your money in the backyard if you don't know what you're doing. So we want to like stack the deck in your favor so we can get some good data fast and see like, is this working? Is it not? And so now the homework. Uh, and so actually in the next video, I'm gonna tell you guys about the next video and then I'll tell you uh, Camden's homework and your homework if you're doing this with us. So. In the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get these audiences onto Facebook, like put it in the right way, avoid easy to make mistakes, and how to set up actually the ad that's going to go out. We'll hit publish in the next video and actually send this ad out. And don't worry, you don't need to have a crazy high budget when it comes to Facebook ads. You can literally start for a dollar a day. I'm gonna recommend you go a little bit higher than that just to get some data a little bit faster, figure out what's working. Um, But we're gonna show you exactly that in the next video. For your homework, and Camden, your homework, is we got to create some creative around this uh, audience. Um, Creative is really what is shown in the ad. So as you're on Facebook, as you're on Instagram, just notice like what stops your scroll. Like what ads do you pay attention to? And kind of ask yourself, what are they doing? So this could be as simple as like a time-lapse video of you making this, this piece. It could be just you holding the piece, like a boomerang of you shaking it back and forth. It could be you know, a clip of it in the show. Like it could really be anything. And so think through these three audiences and maybe um, you can make three different creatives uh, by next week for these three different audiences. So this one, maybe you're standing in front of Hobby Lobby, you know, and it's just in the background. Like sometimes just in the background, like kind of like a background thing will catch that person's attention. So 
And maybe you're standing in front of Hobby Lobby and just holding the sign and just pointing at it or something like that. It could even just be a photo. I personally like video because it has a little bit of movement to it. I think it catches people's attention on another level. So you could do something like that, use that. For this one, maybe it is a clip of the show. I don't know if that's allowed, if we can use that, or maybe it's a photo, or maybe it's like, you know, um, you could have the show on, on like an iPad or a laptop and you could be like, Oh my gosh, this felt, you know, you could just be telling the story of when this got featured and how excited you felt. And now for a limited time, we are making it available for anyone who wants to see the house, right? And then this one, of course, we're just going to go more for the Highland Cow interest and we'll just try some other kind of broad ads. So just, we could just try the photo of the, ad, of the print itself. Maybe you have a photo or a mock-up of it on a wall. Um, and we could say, hey, imagine this beautiful print in your house. Um, we'll just hit more of that broad audience. But um, does that sound doable? You think you can make us three potential creatives, videos or photos that we could use in these ads? Yes, I can do it. Awesome. All right. So with that, we will end this video. We'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to show you exactly how to set up the ad and we'll import in the creative that Canva creates. We'll hit publish. And after that, we'll report back, see what's working, see what's not working, and hopefully we can drive some sales to this business. All right, I just love geeking out on that market research data. It's crazy to see some of those numbers, like Highland Cow, that was such an awesome one, and we did not plan that in advance, and I'm so excited to see how that audience responds to Camden's product. Find out in the next video, she's gonna go create that creative, and you should be creating that too. Then we're gonna take that creative, get it on Facebook, show you all the buttons you need to click, show you all the buttons you don't wanna click, and click publish on the ad in the next video of this playlist. So check out that video. I'm gonna put a link right here. I'm gonna put a link right here to that video. So click on that video to get a full walkthrough of how to set up a conversion ad on Facebook, how to get your creative in there, how to get everything dialed. So we'll see you in this video, all right? I'll talk to you soon.